Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to give you a bit of a Reaper guide. So this Reaper guide will uh, go from 70 through 90 and we will build up the class uh, as we go. So let's hop right in. So the first thing is your standard 1-2-3 combo with Slice, Waxing Slice and Infernal Slice. So this is just your standard 1-2-3 combo. Which you will be using uh, a lot because it's uh, the standard combo. So this combo uh, ba also builds this red gauge right here which is called soul gauge. It will be used to uh, use your uh, avatar abilities which we will go into a little bit later. The next skill at level 10 and she's shadow and death and I will group world of death in here as well. Since this applies... Uh, this skill, the Shadow of Death, applies a debuff called Death's Design, which makes you do 10% more damage to uh, the target uh, that has this debuff. And it lasts 30 seconds and you can stack it up to 60 seconds as you can see right here. And the Whirl of Death is basically just an AoE version of this, so it will apply uh, this death de Death's Design debuff to all enemies uh, around you, in a circle around you. So next we get our ranged skill, which is Harp. This is uh, quite different from all the other uh, melee ranged abilities, since this has a casting time, as you can see. Has 200 potent, uh, 300 potency, uh, and uh, yeah, just your standard uh, ranged spell. Next we get Hell's Ingress and Hell's Egress. This is a teleport backwards and a teleport forwards. Uh, this portal will be unlocked at, uh, with a later trait which allows you to uh, jump back. But this is your uh, Reaper movement skill. So there are two versions of this. The uh, Hell's ing Ingress is the one that dashes you 15 yards for uh, yalms forward and Egress 15 yalms backwards. So as you can see, just uh, instant teleport back and forth. And when you use this, you also get uh, an instant cast of uh, Harp, so which allows you to instantly cast Harp. This will be used when you uh, need to dodge out of an AoE and you can quickly get off a global with Harp and then jump back in. So the next skill we get is our AoE skills. I will just group these two together since this is your standard AoE combo named uh, Spinning Scythe and Nightmare Scythe. And this is just your standard 1-2 one, uh, one, AoE combo, so nothing too fancy about this. This will also build up the soul gauge, which we will get into a little bit later. So next is, the, is your first defensive ability, named Arcane Crest. This is a shield that lasts uh, 5 seconds, and uh, it uh, creates a nullifying uh, barrier that uh, absorbs 10% of your maximum health. So, um, basically you will use this when you are about to get hit by an AoE or uh, unavoidable raid damage or something. But make sure you don't pop it too early since 5 seconds goes, qui uh, goes by quite fast. But yeah, this is just your standard uh, defensive abili ability. Now at level 50 we got our first uh, avatar ability named Bloodstalk. And what this Bloodstalk does, it costs 50 soul gauge. This is the red bar right here. And this is just an instant cast uh, ability, which you will use um, to spend your uh, soul gauge. Which you will build by your standard 1-2-3 combo or your AoE 1-2 uh, combo that we have. And it's just an instant cast uh, avatar attack. So nothing else uh, too special about that. Next we get our AoE version of this. This is named Grim Swath. So what this ability will do, this is just your AoE version of uh, Bloodstalk, which allows you to spend 50, 50 uh, soul gauge uh, to do a big conal AoE in front of you, as you can see. So next is Soul, Scythe, uh, soul Slice and Soul Scythe. I will group these together as well, since it's just a, a single target version and an AoE version. So what this does is this will instantly generate 50 soul gauge, it has a 30 second cooldown and um, this uh, you also will get a passive for this which allows you to get another uh, stack of this which uh, makes sh uh, 
makes it that you have two uh, two charges of soul size and soul scythe instead of one. So this just has a 30 second cooldown, which get, uh, in instantly generates 50 soul gauge. This will be used on cooldown. Just just make sure you don't uh, overcap your soul gauge. So next we have gibbet, gallows, and guillotine. Now these are basically um, what this will. Uh, these abilities are basically a follow-up to your uh, avatar ability. So as as you can see here, once you press Bloodstock, we will get uh, um, a buff named Soul Reaver, which allows you to execute one of these three spells. Now Gibbet and Gallows are kind of a combo, so you will alternate between uh, between them every uh, avatar attack. So, if you, as you can see, now the Gallows is highlighted. And this will also change your Bloodstock to Unveiled Gallows or Unveiled Gibbet, depending on which one you press, which will give it a potency increase. Now, for the AoE one, this is just a follow-up cone, which uh, does nothing special um, and has no, no impact on any other thing. It's just an AoE spender for um, the Soul Reaver buff. Next we have Arcane Circle. Arcane Circle is just a standard party buff which gives your uh, entire party 3% uh, extra damage. This will get a little bit more complicated uh, once, you, once we level up. But for at the moment it's just a 120 second cooldown uh, party buff for 3%. Next we get Gluttony at level 76. Now what Gluttony does is... Instead of giving one stack of Soul Reaver, this will gi uh, give you two, which allows you to do a gibbet and then a gallows afterwards, which will, um, which is just a, a big damage increase, and will also change, of course, the blood stock to unveiled gibbet of unveiled gallows, depending on which one you pressed last. So this is a 60 second cooldown uh, AOE of uh, 500 potency. And uh, this does not share a, a recast with anything else, so it's just a 60 second cooldown. Uh, what I usually use this is, uh, um, since it uh, has a 60 second cooldown, I most of the time will use a soul uh, slice or soul scythe to instantly get it up, get it off, and then go into the gibbet and gallows to build up this shroud gauge right here, which we'll talk about now with our next ability named Enshroud. Now, in Shroud, allows you to go into your demon form. Now, your demon form is quite interesting, since when you press it, you will see that your um, gibbet and gallows change into void reaping and cross reaping. Now, these don't have positionals; the other two uh, do. Um, and this is just a very fast super sane mode, uh, which you will. Um, for the moment, just use your gibbet and gallows, or uh, void reaping and cross reaping, uh, respectively. I'll just alternate between them uh, to get a potency increase. Now, what I forgot to say about gibbet and gallows is they have a uh, positional requirements, so or a, a positional potency increase. Uh, I would say. So gibbet is a flanking uh, positional, and gallows is a rear positional. So they. It is, of course, recommended to um, do these positionals since it's quite a big increase in potency. It is um, 60 potency increase, which is quite big uh, over the course of an entire fight. But as you can see, the the increase, uh, or I should say, the the shroud the in shroud ability. Also, ke always keep up your death design uh, buff. Since it is a 10% damage increase, which is quite big. Now, when you unlock this in Shroud, as you can see, I'm building up this blue gauge right here by using an avatar ability, which spends my soul gauge to use gibbet or gallows, which will increase your Shroud gauge. So basically, this is a, a classic builder spender, but you will spend one resource to build another resource, and then you will spend that resource to go into your uh, Super Saiyan mode, which is quite fast. And for the moment, we will just be using uh, Void Reaping and uh, Cross Reaping, alternate between them. Uh, and that's basically it for Enshroud at the moment. The next one is Solso. Now, Solso is quite an interesting ability. 
it isn't it isn't very complex, but it's uh, just a, a, a charge or, or a, a buff you apply to yourself, which changes the ability into Harvest Moon. Now, Harvest Moon is uh, um, an AOE ability of 600 potency. So when you use this, um, it will just hit all the uh, other enemies around them. Now, interesting to note about Solso is when you are out of combat, it will instantly... Uh, instantly uh, cast it so it doesn't it does not have any charge time but when you when you are in combat and you will charge also it has a five second cast time so you'll only use this when you are uh in a in a downtime and can't hit the boss for multiple seconds so you have another uh stack of harvest moon to spend which is uh just a big aoe uh hit but nothing quite of interest uh afterwards now I will talk about the traits since there is a big gap here. So this one is just uh, the soul gauge. Uh, at level 50 we get bloodstock and allows us to build this uh, soul gauge, which is the red one. This side mastery increases the potency of our uh, basic uh, combo abilities. Now level 70 is enhanced avatar, which uh, gives you the uh, soul reaver buff to allow you to use gibbet or gallows. Uh, the next one is Hell's Gate. This is the one I was talking about earlier with uh, your uh, movement abilities leaving behind the portal. So uh, once, uh, once you use it, you will get... Uh, once you use Hell's Ingress or Egress, the other one will change into a portal ability which allows you to teleport back to your previous location. The next one is the sh uh, Tempered Soul, which just gives you another charge of your Soul Slice and Soul Scythe. The Shroud Gauge... Uh, is just uh, the the blue gauge right here, which builds when you use gibbet, gallows, and guillotine. Now, enhanced arcane crest is quite uh, an interesting uh, trait. This will uh, this will pop when um, arcane crest is up, and it will deal the and and you take more than uh, ten percent, or I would say uh, the barrier breaks. Of the damage uh, you take so if it's more than 10% of your uh, maximum health and you have this shield up it will break and will um, give you a buff named uh, crest of time returned and it gives you a, a healing over time of 100 potency for 15 seconds so in total it's uh, 1500 potency which is quite a big heal over the course of uh, 50 seconds so um, Usually you use this when there is unavoidable AoE damage or um, something like that to give your uh, entire party a, big, a bit of a regeneration uh, effect. Now at level 68 we get Enhanced Shroud. Now what Enhanced Shroud does is when you, when you go into a Shroud, you will see that your Bloodstock and Grim Swath uh, change into uh, Limur Slice and Limur Scythe. And what these what these do is um, they're basically an ability or an in, an off global during your in shroud, which costs uh, two two void uh, balls or void stacks. I, I uh, not sure what it's uh, officially called, but uh, you generate these by spending the blue stacks, which you will see right here when you go into in shroud. And when you see you use your uh, void reaping or cross reaping, your blue uh, shroud uh, ball will change into a void shroud ball, which allows you to use these uh, off globals, which I will show right now. So as you can see, we have these five blue balls right here. Once I uh, press void reaping, it will change into a purple ball, and they both cost two. So once you uh, have done a void reaping and a cross reaping, we can do the limer scythe to uh, spend these souls. And then next, uh, the final thing is the Enhanced Arcane Circle, which also works with uh, our final... Uh, not our final ability, our uh, penultimate ability, which is Plentiful Harvest. Now, P Plentiful Harvest is a 520 uh, potency AoE line. Which uh, will only become available to use after you um, get a buff from Arcane Circle. Now, Arcane Circle will change 
into a buff that uh, gives a, you, it will still be the 3% buff you give to your allies but when they use a uh, weapon skill now it will give you a stack of uh, immortal sacrifice as you can see right here you also generate it yourself which allows you to cast print plentiful harvest now these uh, these stacks uh, you can have a maximum of eight stacks uh, when you're in a raid group or when you are in a dungeon group you will only have uh, four this allows you to cast plentiful harvest which gives uh, 50 shroud gauge instantly which allows you to go into your enshroud uh, instantly in a fight i normally use this um when starting an encounter, I will use Arcane Circle to buff uh, everyone up. Make sure I generate these eight uh, stacks for the maximum amount of potency of Plentiful Harvest. And then I will just go into Enshroud during the burst window and use uh, everything in Enshroud and then continue with uh, the, the normal rotation afterwards. So that is it for uh, Plentiful Harvest and Arcane Circle. Now we get our final ability named Communio. This is just a finisher for Enshroud, uh, which has a little bit. Uh, it is a 1.3 second cast time, which is a thousand potency, uh, which is just a very big hit. And this will cost one uh, blue soul when you are in your uh, Enshroud mode. So now you don't have to. Uh, finish your enshroud with uh, your void reaping or cross reaping and ha don't have uh, the lost soul to spend Which you will uh, you will now use to uh, Use communio so Once you go into enshroud now if I just build it up here Now when we go into Enshroud, we just use your Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, Lemur Slice, Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, Lemur Slice. And now we have one soul left which we will use to cast Communio, which is just a massive hit, cool animation. And this will finish off your uh, Enshroud uh, phase, I'll uh, call it. So now we have all our abilities uh, unlocked. Let's see what we, uh, how we use them. So I will give a bit of a demonstration for an opener that I do. I'm not sure if this is the optimal opener. Uh, this is just what I do. Uh, and you can copy it or um, you can um, figure out the optimal opener uh, yourself if you want to. So first of all, uh, before uh, engaging, make sure you use your soul so before pulling. So we have this stack of Harvest Moon up, which you can use when you are... Uh, I would I would normally not use this in uh, during combat just when you have to go out of range in combination with your health egress then you can use this to uh, have a, a big AOE hit to spend but yeah so let's show uh, I will first show the opener in uh, slow motion or I will just uh, call out every ability I'm pressing and then show it in uh, real time so what I do is I go in Use your uh, Shadow of Death to get uh, this design. Then I use Arcane Circle, Soul Slice, Gluttony, Gibbet, Gallows, Plentiful Harvest, Enshroud, Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, Lemur Slice, Void Reaping, Cross Reaping, Lemur Slice, Communio. And then I just, and then you just continue with your uh, standard one, two, three. Don't forget to keep this up. This buff since 10% is a very big increase. Never forget to get that up. Spend your soul slice stacks, and just keep alternating between gibbet and gallows until we have our next, next enshroud up, which we have now, and just hop it, go into enshroud, and then continue um, with the rest and this is basically uh, the entire of the reaper combat so it's it's not very difficult once you understand how it all works and it uh, combines together it's a very natural class with a lot of cool animations and uh, pretty fast gameplay since you hop into enshroud very often 
uh, with using all the abilities. So yeah, let's uh, jump ahead into what an opener or the opener I do would look like in real time. And I'm back. So let's do this uh, opener. So yeah, that was the opener in real time. Make sure you keep your the final uh, your uh, end of your enshroud with communio into inside the arcane circle buff, so you get the extra three percent damage on it to make it uh, hit even harder. But I think that about wraps it up as uh, for this Reaper guide. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and learned a bit more about how Reaper will uh, work. And I uh, enjoy. Uh, I hope you enjoy uh, playing it yourself. So thanks for watching. Uh, this was the first video I've ever made. So if you have any suggestions or uh, feedback, um, you can give me. Please uh, give them to me in the comments so I can um, improve my uh, videos for the next time. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.